Okay. Win, lose, or draw. This is the last shot I'm going to give it. Um, this is a tutorial on uh, Sculpty Paint. Sculpty Paint was created by Cell Eadman uh, for creating sculpted prims in Second Life. Uh, or for Second Life, I should say. Uh, Sculpty Paint is a Java Java program, not JavaScript, Java program, and therefore it is available for Windows, Linux, or Mac OS X, and it is a free program. Uh, if you'd like to give a donation, I will provide a link right there. Now, um, Sculpty Paint, as I say, is a free program. It's Java, which means it's slow, and uh, because it was written by a non-expert in graphical user interfaces, uh, it can be a little confusing to work with. Um, let me briefly go over some of the elements and the tools, and uh, hopefully we can at least broaden your horizon a little bit, and if not amplify your awesome, at least uh, tune down your crappiness. So, uh, <laughs> let's move on to the program itself. Now, this is um, the opening screen of Sculpty Paint. Uh, when you load it up, you'll get this. Now, what is this? This is a, the Morph tool. And you can tell this by the incredibly counterintuitive fact that this little button here is outlined. Now, this button... I like to think of this page as like a manila folder turned upside down. Uh, so, these are tabs on several folders. There are, in fact, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 tabs. And they allow you to edit RGB layers, drawing tool, flower tool, stone tool, etc., etc. And the biggest problem, of course, is that the first one isn't where you think it's supposed to be. So, morph tool, right there. We're going to lose this page because we got to wander in order to get stuff done. Now, um, so just keep in mind that this is where the morph tool is, and if you get lost, just jump around on pages until you find it. Um, that's what I always do. Uh, on this page, we can load a sculpt image, PNG. Now, I've tried other things, other file types, and to be honest, just use PNG. Um, I think some of them will work, but others of them will cause the program to crash, and you don't want it to crash. Uh, another very important thing to remember is when you press the Load Sculpt Image button, only press it once. Uh, because it's JavaScript, or Java, rather, doesn't handle um, multiple clicks real well. I mean, it does, but it'll just keep opening Document Find Windows in Windows. Uh, this is Load Texture PNG. I've never used this, but apparently it allows you to load a texture. Uh, to wrap around the sculpt. Now, this is your save area, 64 by 64. Don't use 128 by 128. You don't need 128 by 128. And this allows you to save your thing as an object file. I don't even know if that works, but it's pretty cool that you can do it, huh? Now, over here, three handy buttons. Smooth Sculpt, Smooth Torus, Smooth Plane. Now, when it says Smooth Sculpt, it means Smooth Sphere. Uh, this allows you to smooth something in the direction of a sphere. This allows you to smooth something in the direction of a torus. This allows you to smooth something in the direction of a plane. Now, smooth buttons are going to be found on multiple pages, uh, so don't worry if these particular buttons, you forget where they are, it's not a problem. The reason they call this the Morph Tool page is because it allows you to morph from Model A to Model B, using this slider here, which can be tediously slow, but it allows you to select the layer, or not the layer, the position, or the amount of morph you want between these two sculpts, and if you watch the uh, cube here, this is the actual texture, you can sort of get a feel of what a sphere looks like, and what a cube looks like, and how they're going to mesh together. So, fine. That's the morph tool. This allows you to get Model A, it's, that means go to Model A, and this means go to Model B. Copy to A, copy to B allows you to take what's currently in this area and stick it in A, and it allows you to morph between two different sculpts. Very handy if you want to do, like, a five-frame animation 
and you want to sculpt the, f the beginning and the end, and then you want to do several morphs in between. Yeah. So, but for now, honestly, we're just going to work with this one. Now, that's more or less the page here. I'm going to talk a little bit about this area down here, and then I'm going to talk about this area here. This button right here, this is your best friend. This is the button you want to push at the end. Uh, this button will allow you to maximize the sculpt. Now you'll notice that there's some little JPEGing artifacting going on in here. Uh, you can you can sort of recognize that as a little bit of warbling. Uh, if you just tap Smooth Sculpt a couple times, that goes away. Uh, but it allows you to um, maximize the area so that you don't have these massive bounding boxes around these little bitty sculpts. And it allows you to get the, you know, the most detail out of a... You don't want to make a mountain and have it only, you know, have it only be half the size of the brim. So, resize your sculpts so that you're working with the right size. But for now, back to Model A. These areas down here, um, you'll see that this is a little, little dim texture. This is Render. And what this does is it allows you to sort of change the resolution of the rendering of this area. This is the preview area. I call it the preview area. It lets you see your actual sculpt in world and what it would look like in world. And you can view it as a 64 by 64 sculpt, which of course we can't see in Second Life. A 32 by 32 sculpt, which um, pretty closely approximates what we see in Second Life. And the 16 by 16, which closely approximates what we're used to seeing when we back away from a sculpt more than 11 feet, or 11 meters. Um, but for now, uh, I usually work in 64 by 64, doesn't really matter. Um, it's just how you want to see the thing. Um, these four areas are like your rendering texture tools. Uh, they let you see um, the sculpt map applied to the, t to the prem itself, or you can have it as a solid color, like white, or you could view wireframe, uh, or you can view a texture mapped onto it. Uh, I tend to work in color mode, but you can just as easily work as solid. Um, seems just as useful to me. Uh, now these down here allow you to change the type. Now this is the sculpt type, not the uh, model type. So we're not talking about, when we say sphere here, we're not talking about the fact that it's a round ball, because this is also a spherical sculpt. Um, so, when we're talking about sphere down here, we're talking about the sculpt type uh, that's set through uh, through the program in Second Life, uh, and it allows you to have the plane, the torus, the, the cylinder, and of course the sphere, which is what we're going to work with now. Last two things on this page, very important. Uh, this allows you to see it full bright. I know that's very important to some people, <laughs> not me, uh, but. Um, Personally, I find tr that to be frankly distracting. Uh, but the grid here allows you to turn on and off the axis. Now, if you're eagle-eyed, you'll notice that the axis here is in fact rotated. Uh, green is pointing up and down, and we're at a 45 degree angle between red and blue. Uh, this is probably the worst angle you could ever view a prim from, because as we all know in Second Life, blue is supposed to be up, up and down. And uh, the way to fix this, of course, is to rotate the uh, preview. I do this by just clicking and dragging, and that allows me to rotate the model a bit. Now, I try not to rotate it too much, because as you can see, there are no arrows here, so we don't know which end's up. Uh, to be honest, uh, I usually end up doing a little trial and error to get things rotated back into position properly when I work with this program. Uh, and I do a lot of work on the beta grid, uh, because uploads are free! Uploads are always free on the beta grid. Well, not technically true. Uploads cost money, but they cost pretend money! And that's even better than free! Unless you don't have any pretend money. But if you don't have any pretend money, there are ways around that, too. You can always ask people for help, and people on the beta grid usually happy to hand you some money, because it's pretend money. Anyway, we're going to move on to the next volume of this, and uh, we'll see you on the next page.